talked a lot about this in other videos, but we've never put it into one single video. So today we're going to talk about how you can transform your speaker's sound, kind of, for free. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about moving your speakers around. Yesterday did a great video with John Darko about CDs, and it was a lot of fun. We talked a lot about the Schiet Erd. It's their CD transport. If you want to check that video out, I will link it right here and at the end of the video. John was super gracious to come on the show, and I really appreciate it. But let's get into the speakers. Let's talk about soundstage. <laughs> One of my other bestest friends in the YouTube sphere is Ron from New Record Day. Ron was the one that did basically the go-to set the bar for speaker soundstage and how to place them. That video is called Lots. I will also link that video so you can go check it out because he talks about things in way more depth and he's a lot smarter than I am. So I'm gonna give you the Reader's Digest version. Lots basically means you're bringing your speakers to you out into the room instead of keeping them closer to the wall. Let me draw you a little picture. This X right here is you. I'm just gonna say this is kind of where most people will put their speakers, okay? The little eyes right there, that's the mouth. Eyes are the speakers, okay? So what we have here Somewhat of a unilateral triangle. And that's what people, most people say, that's how you should have your speakers. However, with lots, let me waste a lot of printer paper today. You stay in the same spot and you move your speakers way in from the wall. Basically what you wanna do is sit where you normally sit and then put your speakers right here and start to move them back towards the wall. <laughs> until you get the perfect sound stage okay i think you get the gist of it so start your speakers right next to you i know it sounds weird and you're gonna have to have a lot of speaker cable and then start moving them back now if you can't do that because if you have tower speakers and you have a family chances are that your family doesn't want a pair of obelisks sitting in the center of your room so when you go to get something at midnight for a snack maybe some peanut butter and powdered sugar mixed together you're gonna knock over one of your speakers so I kind of found that you can do the opposite. So instead of moving your speakers out from the wall, you can move yourself into the speakers closer to the wall. And guess what? It's a little bit easier moving a chair closer to the wall than moving two speakers into the middle of the room. You'll get the best experience by doing it the lots way and bringing your speakers out. But I have found, especially in a desktop situation, that if you move yourself right into the speakers and they're not towed in directly at you, we're gonna get to that later, that you can get a very, very broad, huge soundstage. Also, if your desk is in the middle of the room and you have a bunch of space behind the speakers, you can also get very good soundstage, but you're probably gonna need a sub. Another part of soundstage can be toe in. Toe in is how your speakers are angled in relation to your ears. So if you have your speakers looking directly at you and you can't see either side of your speaker, you can only see the front baffle, it means those speakers are towed in directly at you. You can also do a heavy toe in, which means you're gonna take your right speaker and you're gonna to tow it in until the tweeter is pointing your left shoulder if you had something like a laser pointer. So it'd be hitting your left shoulder your left speaker would be towed in so heavily it would be hitting your right shoulder. That's also a way to get crazy soundstage and crazy imaging if you can't move your speakers into the room or move yourself closer to the speakers. It's a lot of fun. You should try it all different ways. Okay. Takeaway here for soundstage, either move your speakers into the room, move yourself into the speakers, and then you can tow in heavily. How to improve bass? Well, this is an easy one. Just go buy a subwoofer. <laughs> just kidding. You just move your speakers closer to the wall. We have what's called room gain. It's when the, it's basically when your room is doing this. And a lot of companies will actually give 
an anechoic rating for their frequency response. So let's say anechoic goes down to, the speaker goes down to 45 hertz. Then it will say in room. In room, it goes down to 37 hertz. Well, there's a lot of assumptions going on because everybody's room's different. But what one can do is just push your speakers all the way against the back wall. Even if they're ported, you can still shove the speakers against the wall. And then listen, one of the drawbacks of doing this though is sometimes you will lose some clarity in the lower mid-range because you will basically be artificially inflating the amount of bass that's in your room. A little bit's good. A lot of it can be, well, not so good. But the good news is, I don't know what your room looks like. You do, and you have some speakers in your room right now, so you can play around with it. Play the same track over and over and over again in different areas, different distances from the back wall, and find one that has a good balance of increasing the bass while not overdoing it and covering up some of the lower mid clarity. It's not complicated at all. All right, let's say you have a speaker. Let's say you love the speaker. It's a beautiful speaker. It looks brilliant. Your whole family loves it. If it was a dog, you would adopt it. But you got one problem. It screams at you a little bit, a little bit too much treble. More importantly, a little bit too much upper mid-range forwardness. Now, what are you gonna do? You gonna go throw those speakers out? No, you can't, because you bought them. You're gonna do a little bit of toe-in. I just picked these up. These are sitting here from yesterday's video. Stone Temple Pilots. Marilyn Manson, got Chris Cornell, got some Corn Paradigm Shift, Corn, which one is this? The Path of Totality. <laughs> Real good right here, Godsmack. Right. Toe-in is where the tweeter is facing you. Okay, so if we're looking at a speaker like this, and you can't see either side of the speaker, then that speaker is towed in directly at you and if the tweeter is at ear level that means you're getting the most trouble that that speaker can produce at any given time so if your speaker looks like this and it's aiming directly at your ear and it's too bright well then there's something that you can do you just have to do this like that. Get that tweeter away from aiming just at you. You're gonna want the speaker to be looking more like it's flat against the wall. Now it doesn't have to be on the wall. I'm just talking about the orientation of the speaker to the wall. And if it's a crazy, bright, screaming speaker, you can just have them literally flat against the wall. So no toe-in at all. And that's called off-axis performance. When a tweeter isn't aimed directly at you, there is some drop off on the treble. Actually, there's some drop off in the upper mid range too. Now, you can also do that by lowering the speaker in relation to your ear level or raising the speaker in relation to your ear level. You will get a bit of a different sound. Oftentimes when I raise the speaker so my ear is in line with maybe this part of the speaker, or even with the woofer, it can improve some mid-range richness and reduce that screaming, harsh, forward nature of some speakers. Sometimes people will simply invert the speaker. And that can also work too. Other times you can just do this and slouch down in your chair and see if it works. Because if you slouch down wherever you're sitting, then you know, hey, this sounds good. And then you can go buy different size speaker stands instead of buying the speaker stands and then it not working. Okay, okay. So where the tweeter is pointing at and where the tweeter is located either above or below your ear is going to determine how much treble you are hearing. You can basically tune a speaker. Now, what happens if your speaker doesn't have enough treble? Well, there's nothing you can really do with placement if you have them aimed right at you at ear level. You may have to use some tone controls or you may have to get a different speaker unfortunately because while you can reduce treble while you can increase bass while you can reduce bass by bringing it more into the room once it's in the middle of the room and you're hearing just the speaker there's no room interaction if you don't have enough treble not really anything you can do want more bass put it closer to the wall 
Another interesting thing about soundstage and imaging is I've had speakers that in theory should have been soundstaging and imaging better when I had them about three feet from the wall, but they didn't. When I placed them right up against the wall, they got really good. The soundstage and imaging was really, really good. So it depends on your speakers and it depends on your room. The fun thing though is you get to experiment and you get to experiment for the low, low price of just your time. So start with the equilateral triangle and then start moving things around one at a time. Because if you move too many things around at once, then you don't know what you did to cause that change. So stay in the same spot, start bringing your speakers out. Stay in the same spot and then do the heavy, heavy toe-in. Stay in the same spot and then do it facing directly out. And you will find that those one speakers that you thought you knew so well are gonna start sounding differently. Listen to the same track after you've made a change. Maybe take some notes and figure out exactly what the best position is for your speakers in your room for the low, low price of free. I hope you enjoyed this video. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord, Patreon only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. Links in the description. Click, sign up. Even if you quit during the free trial, I still get a couple of dollars. You can also use the links in the description. Most of those are affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I get a commission. Doesn't cost you any more though, so it's a great way to support the channel. So don't binge, oh, you can also buy me a cup of coffee. Don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen maybe with your speakers in a different position, which completely blew your mind how different they sound and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm a cheap audio man.